Hello all and welcome to Wow Crochet. My name is Mary and in today's tutorial we are working on our mystery crochet along at the moment which is a poncho that you all know as Rastaman Vibration or Rastaman Vibration. <laughs> Depends on how you want to pronounce it. You can pronounce it like the Australians do, Rastaman Vibration. <laughs> <laughs> or you can pronounce it any way you like and I pronounce it Rustaman Vibrations. So there you go. This name was chosen by one of our subscribers here at Wow Crochet for the um, mystery competition and that would be Sticky Stitch. Thank you so much for um, the name and also thank you for the colours even though they are stepping out of my comfort zone. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks Sticky Stitch. <laughs> These are colours that I would not put together as you can see them now we do have other color combinations underneath now the reason we have it underneath is because i've already made it in a poncho style so what we're going to do is we're going to start off by making let me just show you closer one of the squares the join i'm using here is a little different than joins that we have used in the past now i wanted to do something different to show you another way of joining your work there are many ways you can join it we have done the join as you go in the past, which is a little different to this one here as well. But this is also a join as you go. And the actual technique itself is a little bit easier, I think, than the other one. Um, but again, it's another technique for a join as you go. So every time I do something here at Wow Crochet, I like to occasionally add a new stitch. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you exactly what I used for this particular piece. I use, let's go to the yarn first. So these are the colours that Sticky Stitch chose. Okay, now I will mention the name of the colours in the actual tutorial as I go along so that you're aware of their names. But in the meantime, I'm just going to go over here and say that it does, they do, I should say they do, they all do, call for a four millimetre size hook. You will need your sewing needle You'll need between two and four stitch markers, it doesn't matter. You may not even need that many, you might only need one, okay? And you will need your scissors. Now, in reference to the yarn that we used, this yarn here is a Wren cotton, and these ones here are all Bendigo Woolen Mills cotton. They are eight ply cottons, and they call for a size four millimeter hook. Um, you can use a four and a half, Personally, I would stick to the four, otherwise your poncho may be a little bit too big and it'll be harder to decrease those stitches, which I will be showing you up the top. This is why I've left this part blank. See how I've started crocheting the um, parchment or the cream border here? You will be doing the same up the top, but that won't happen until the very, very end of our poncho. The reason is, with ponchos, they... They start off loose, I've noticed with ponchos, they start off quite loose. Once you start doing the rest, that can actually tug up here and pull it down real tight so it's actually fitting on you tight. Or they can actually tug so that they're actually pulling and making it loose. So what we're going to do is focus on the top part towards the end of our poncho. Okay, that is actually the very, very end. And we are using pretty similar stitch but not exactly the same. So get excited guys, because every stitch in this tutorial, well not this one here, because you know all these ones you're seeing today, except for the join as you go, um, but every stitch as you see from now on is going to be something different, something unusual. It'll still be quite basic for newbies to do, and yet challenging as well. So I'm not going to talk anymore, guys, just like most of my tutorials, they do go a long time. So I'm going to let you head off on your own and create our mystery poncho, Rustaman Vibrations. Good luck, guys. Alrighty, guys, now let's explain quickly the yarn so that you understand what you are using and how much you need to use. Alright, now this one here is called uh, Pine Lime Cotton from Bendigo Woolen Mills. You will be needing um, very minimal of each color now looking at the colors that you want you just heads up guys you do not need to choose the same colors that I am choosing so it's entirely up to you for your color combination but as you can see I'll leave the squares here so you can have a look at them as you can see there are a multi each each row is a multi color okay so you are changing threads after each row if you don't want to do that either by all means don't but I think 
the color combination regardless of which which you know way you want to put them or how many which color you want to put where to me brightens up the poncho all right so that's just these are just an idea of colors if you want to choose your own color combination by all means sit there with all your colors from your stash you will not need a lot of yarn okay but let me explain in it's hard to explain when you're using all different colors how much you will need but this particular yarn here has 485 meters or it's a 200 gram yarn if you were going to focus on um, ponchos i know for a fact that between four and six of these skeins make a perfect poncho so you're looking at about 400 to 600 grams or um, I think it's 1200 and something meters or uh, 1300 yards or something like that in it's roughly around that now I say roughly because each size each person's size will be will be for them does that make any sense so towards the end of the um, tutorial not so much this tutorial but the very last part that we do I will say pop this on you and if it doesn't measure correctly all you need to do is one or two more rows of this particular stitch whatever the last one is I'm not giving away too much guys <laughs> or I will say if it's too long take a couple of rows off and this is the border row we're putting on now okay so that's pretty much what I will say towards the end by the way you can use wool and you can use acrylic you can use anything you like for this poncho these are the colors we are using um, these this one here is called pine lime only because I saved the label this one's a leaf this one is peppermint I know this one is parchment now parchment is a cream if you want just find yourself a medium green a dark green and a kind of a garden green if you will and this one here this is just I'm only using very minimal of this because I don't have much um, I didn't buy an extra skein and I should have um, and I bought the wrong color green so um, sticky stitch received the wrong color green <laughs> <laughs> sorry sticky stitch um, I may send you out another one when um, I get an opportunity to find this color because I can't find it anywhere <laughs> um, but I lost a label on this one so get yourself one two three four greens a dark pink a light pink <laughs> and a a cream if you will all right that is all the colors that I've used here now you don't have to use the same colors I've used but if you wanted to use seven color combinations these are the colors that you will need all right so that's all I'm saying I don't want to say too much I will say however that this is the Bendigo Woolen Mills cotton if you are here in Melbourne or even I believe if you are interstate you might be able to get them as well and this is the wren cotton now i didn't i didn't save any of the labels of the other one how silly am i but i did have a label on the blue and and some of the other one this one's called sky i think yes it is it's called sky all right so just quickly i'll show you both labels so that you know what you um kind of need now apparently you can mix uh two types of cotton together but not two sizes of cotton okay if you are going to make a square like that and you put eight ply around here or a number three around here if you're in a different country then you decide the last row to put a four ply which is a number four no because that will tighten up your work because a four ply or a number two whatever it is um i think i said number four i meant number two sorry will actually tighten up your work so really use an eight ply and an eight ply or um, a 10 ply an 8 ply is like a number three in your country so use a, a three and a three or an eight and an eight or a four and a four but don't use different size don't mix different sizes okay but you can mix different cottons if you have different cottons just be weary that if you're using a normal cotton and a Mercer size cotton that will be totally different again so just be weary of the cotton you can mix the cotton if it's hundred percent pure and this one here is also hundred percent pure cotton oh I don't know where that sits but it is <laughs> there it is up there all right so um, both of them call for a four millimeter 
I think they both call me to get a close up of that one. Um, there's your four. Okay. Um, or a 4.5. I did use a four. I think a four gives you a better textured um, piece. All right. So I'm sorry, this is taking so long, guys. I am not going to talk anymore. We're just going to get started. What we want to do first, pop everything out the way so we don't have a big mess. Oh, and that's another thing, guys. I've used the cream as a final color for each row. Right, not in there, just the, the edges there. Now, all you need to do is choose one of the colors you want as your final row, okay? It doesn't have to be the cream. I'm sorry, get rid of that, that's not in it. It doesn't have to be the cream, okay? It can be this color for your final row, this or this, whichever you want. Um, but think about this, whichever color you choose, which I've chosen the cream, that will be your border color, okay? So. Well, your border colour, it'll be more of a domineering colour, if you will. I hope that makes any sense. It'll take over more of your uh, poncho, okay? So I've chosen the, the cream for that. So you won't see the cream being used today um, at all. But here we go. Let's get started. All right. So any square you like, we are going to make... Oops, oops. We are going to make our first square. And we're going to make um, the top one. Because what we're going to do, we're going to start with that square and then I'm going to show you the very next square because you have to complete the next square before um, doing the border row on all your other squares. You'll understand that when you start, but we're going to start with that square right there. We're going to use the exact colours and let's just get started. Alrighty guys, we're going to start off with a quick slip knot. Grab your little tail end, wrap it around your finger once and twice, holding it there and holding your working end with your pinky on the bottom. Okay, grab your back loop, passing it halfway over the other loop, grab the other loop, passing it all the way over, get your hook, pop it in and give your yarn a tuck. Okay, easy? All right, we're going to start off with the basic step to doing a granny stitch or a granny square and that's chaining one and your chaining is yarn over your hook, pull a loop through to the loop on your hook. You're going to do it a second time. Three and four. Alright, now you have your four chains. What you're going to do, get closer, you're going to pop your hook in that very first chain that you made, grab a loop and pull it through. Just gently tug your work. You should have that little thread at the back right at the top there and your work your chain space should be in your thumb and your finger there okay now you're just going to pull that loop through to the loop on your hook making sure you are holding that space open because we're going to work in that space now chaining up four i'm sorry chaining up three so yarn over your hook pull a loop through once twice and three times we're going to form just one double crochet for now because i want to pop a stitch marker there but i don't want to lose that space so don't let go of your work and your double crochet is yarn over your hook okay pop it in the space that we made okay yarn over your hook pull up a loop you should have three loops on your hook yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through the last two now i just want to stop there so that we can grab a stitch marker all right and i'll just show you quickly where you need to place a stitch marker now this is a double crochet that you just made and I'll get a nice close up for you right there. That's the one you just made. You don't want to pop it through those two little threads there. Okay, that's the double crochet. What you want is your chain, the top, the very top chain stitch that you made, your last one, which was the chain up three that we did before the double crochet. That is where you need to pop your stitch marker in there. Okay, two loops on the top and one loop on the bottom if that helps. All right. All right, so we are going to continue. Now, we have done the chain three. We've done one double crochet. That's still too far away. I'm sorry, guys. Let's try that. We're going to do one more double crochet. That's yarn over your hook. Pop it in the space. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Three loops. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through the next two. Now, you will notice I'm crocheting over the tail. You don't have to if you don't want to. If you find it awkward, this is the best way I do it for myself. And I actually weave it in as well at the end, okay? So now you have three. You actually have two double crochets and your chain three. Your chain three is acting as a double crochet in this round. So now what you're going to do is chain two. 
one and two. Now that's going to be your corner, one corner, okay? Now we're gonna do another double crochet in that center. Actually, we're gonna do another three double crochets. So go ahead and do your three double crochets. One. Two. And three. There's your first corner, all right? So now we are gonna chain two again to form the second corner, one and two. Now we're gonna put three double crochets in that space again. One, two, three. Okay, chaining one and two. And now we're going to put three double crochets in that space one more time. One, two, and three. Again, forming another corner, chain one and two. Pass your tail end right at the very back now because you've crocheted over that, okay? You've got three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets, chain two, and three double crochets, chain two. Now you need to slip stitch to join. All right, now slip stitch, a little bit tricky if your, your stitch here is fairly tight, like mine usually is. <laughs> Every time I do this, it's always tight. It's not too bad today. So pop your hook in there, no loops or anything, just pop your hook in there. Take your stitch marker out if you have one. All right. There's your hook, still in the stitch. Pull a loop through and pull it through to the loop on your hook. Now we're gonna change color, okay? Let me bring that out a little bit. So that's yarn over your hook, pull a loop right through. So you give yourself a bit of a tail for weaving in. I don't know how much of a tail you need to weave in later. All right, what we're going to do, we're not gonna worry about weaving it in yet. For now, we're gonna jump straight into our very next color. Now, for those of you who know me, and that's quite a few. If you are joining us new, you would not know this, but I do not like to start in the same place that I finished off. You can if you like. And actually I don't because I show you a way where we can actually weave in that end in this round, okay? So in this round, we're starting at the end. Make sure you, stay, you didn't turn your work over or anything. But, and how you'll know that because you've popped your tail at the back so this is still the front of your work so pop your hook into any corner you like i'm doing at the corner just before the tail end again you don't have to pop your yarn over your hook that's your next color i'm using the lightest of the pinks okay if that helps grab your tail just pass it in front for a minute because we're going to lock it into place chaining one two and three and you know what because we've got nothing holding us down, we're going to pop our stitch marker in now. Okay, before we were, we were worried about keeping that centre straight, whereas now we don't have to worry about that. So grab your stitch marker and pop it in that third chain that you just made. And what you need to have with this stitch marker is two loops on top and one underneath. Okay, if that helps. All right. In this space right here, we are going to do two double crochets. So yarn over your hook and notice I'm going to actually crochet over this tail. Okay, so yarn over your hook, pop it in the space, pull up your loop, three loops, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through the next two. And you're going to do it again. Okay, so you've got your chain three like you did before, your chain three and your two double crochets. Now you're going to keep forming your corners by doing chain one and two. Then you're going to put another three double crochets in there, still crocheting over your tail end. Again, if you don't find that comfortable, then by all means, don't crochet over it, just weave it in at the end, okay? These are just little tips that I use. It's not necessary for you to use them, but I do use them. Grab your little tail end, pass them at the back, and now you're going to skip all of these double crochets from the previous round, pop in that corner with three double crochets, chain two and three double crochets but here's a little tip that i use in a lot of my tutorials i grab that green tail end at the back of my work you don't have to this is just a tip that i use often and i crochet my first double crochet over over it first 
So there's your first double crochet in that corner. Again, this is not a compulsory thing. And if you find it uncomfortable, don't use it. Okay, so there it is. That tail is in the back. And now I put the next two double crochets that I'm supposed to put in there. Yes, chain one and two. And then three double crochets. One, two, three. All right, now we're going to jump into that corner with three, two, three. I like to call it a double cluster set. Okay, because every in this pattern or this design for this part only, <laughs> part one only, three of them means a cluster set, chain one and two, and then you put another three, which means another cluster set in that corner. A little bit confusing. It's a, it's a little bit of crochet jargon that you may or may not know. Um, if you know, then you know what I mean. <laughs> if you're new to the channel or new to crochet in general, a cluster set is, um, say, if you're working on the same stitch all the way through a pattern and you hear someone say cluster set, you go and look at the pattern and the pattern for the cluster set is whatever. And ours is three double crochets. Don't stress if you don't understand that. I'll, I'll tell you the whole thing anyway. So you've done one corner, two corners. I don't know why I'm telling you anyway. Three corners. We're going to do our fourth corner. And you're doing three, two, three, three double crochets, chain two, and... Three double crochets one and two one two and three okay now the end of this round is a little different than the one we just did well it's very similar but it's got that big space you don't have to do anything with the big space you're just jumping over and you are slip stitching oh, if you can get your hook in it <laughs> <laughs> you are slip stitching. I'm going to take my stitch marker out. This is going to make it easier for me. But uh, yeah, try not to do this third stitch very tight, guys. Otherwise, you're going to have the same problems that I do <laughs> in every tutorial. <laughs> you would think I'd know by now. All right, and pull a loop through like so. Yeah, nice tight stitch. And pull a loop through to the loop on your hook. And guess what, guys? We are pulling up a loop because... We are going to change our colours yet again. I know, right? I know, I know. All right, so that's that. And your next colour is this green here, which I believe is called Leaf in the um, Bendigo cotton range. All right, well, let's bring that up again, nice and close. All right, so there's the green. We'll leave it there for a minute. Now, so yours truly has a thread here, has a thread here, and has a thread here. If I start there, I think that's far too close for me. So I'm just going to pop too close to the thread. Again, it doesn't matter where you start. I'm just going to pop in a corner where there's no threads at all. Okay? That's me being fussy and pedantic and the rest of it. <laughs> so grab your loop, just pop it over your hook there like so, and pull the loop through grabbing your tail end, passing it over because we're going to lock that into place with, of course, a chain one. Chaining one, two, and let's do this little stitch here a bit loose. Three. Don't do it. I don't know what I've done with the stitch marker. It's gone missing. Okay, let's try another one. I, keep, I don't know how I lost that last stitch marker. Anyway, it doesn't matter. That's why I ask you to put plenty there just in case it's probably on the floor knowing me okay so here we go we are going to oh, i just got sidetracked there i do apologize <laughs> oh that's too close get it right mary all right we are going to do obviously your double crochet in that space crocheting over your tail end if you like i will because it locks it into place remember we don't actually pop a knot in that um tail so it's best to literally crochet over it and then later weave that in as well. That's how pedantic I am. Chaining one and two. You know the part because you did it before and you're doing this. But this round is going to be a tad different because now we've got some spaces in between that we need to fill up. Okay, so what you're doing is your three, two, three. And you knew that. Yes. Well, I hope you did. <laughs> Just went ahead and did it with, without you. I'm sorry, guys. Three, two, three in the, in the corner. Okay. 
Now in the space before the corner, you need to pop one cluster set, which is three double crochets. Simple, yeah? Oops, no, not that simple. <laughs> Let's try it again. One, <laughs> get it right, Mary. Two, well, I've lost the plot now, guys, sorry. Three, <laughs> okay, so there you go. Now you're gonna pop a double cluster set in there. That's three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. So this is pretty much a basic granny square, except your next square is going to be a tad different. Well, it's the same, but I'll explain that to you in a minute. One and two, and do your next three double crochets. All right. Now, I've come up to my tail end. Again, you don't have to, but I pop it at the back like so. Do my first double crochet over it like so and then I drop the tail while I'm in the middle of working over it if you find you've done this and you didn't do it tight enough and it's sticking out at the end this is all you do turn it around give your tail a tug all right if that helps okay now we are doing three two three in the corner so you can see a square um, growing now so it's getting nice and big it's looking gorgeous with the different colors I'm not sure what colors you chose if you want to leave a comment in the comment section down below talking about your colors you can you don't need to I just thought if you'd like to that would be lovely all right and there you go now there's that space before the corner you're going to put one cluster set in there which is three double crochets one two Oh, I'm sorry, am I going too fast, guys? I do apologise. Three. All right, so now you yarn over, pop your three, two, three in that corner. Three double crochets. Chain one and two and three double crochets. And you don't have to sing it, you just have to... <laughs> sorry, guys. Oh my poor subscribers I feel sorry for them how they put up with me is beyond me <laughs> I put put three double crochets in that space in between the two corners I'm trying not to grab your uh, stitch marker like I usually do with the hook all right so here we are here we are here we are okay now this is where we were with the pink before when we had the slip stitch We're going to do exactly the same but I know for a fact this stitch is relatively loose I'm just going to pop my hook in there I tell a lie <laughs> it's not oh there's a little bit loose okay pull your loop through pull it through the loop on your hook pull up a loop you are going to cut it yet again for the last time whoops take a little stitch marker out <laughs> all right and there's your little square you might find that this will happen that is normal if it really is bad it means either your tension is too tight or too loose um, or the wrong hook size for your work okay but don't panic if it does turn up a little bit that's normal all righty guys what I would like for you to do now just quickly is to sh I just want to show you quickly before I tell you what we need to do next how to weave in one of these ends because one of them can be a little tricky um, and that would be the one where it's it's not tricky it's just got a very smaller section to weave in so just with your tail end just with your your needle remember you only crocheted over this so if you put your needle through there you might unravel what you've crocheted over so grab a little thread off somewhere in there and go through that section again by splitting that first thread just having a look see make sure you can't see your needle and you can't so pop your thread through and that's your second time because your first time you crocheted over it second time we've weaved it in we're going to do one more time now you have to grab another thread from somewhere else so just lift up and have a look see I said I'm just splitting that one right there you'll probably see it happening there split that one right there I'm popping the needle through all thicknesses be nice and thick now checking you can't see the needle and you can't and just pop that through like so and then grab your scissors give it a cut and just give it a gentle tug and it'll hide inside there that'll never come undone all right in the wash because I know there are some people who wash their gear in the washing machine and they can come undone 
Alrighty guys, for the next step of this tutorial, um, it's probably best for you to head off on your own and come back and meet me here in a couple of days time. Why? Because you have done the one square there, like so, right? You've done your three rounds. What I want for you to do is to do all of these squares, seven on this side, and I'll show you at the other side in a minute. So it goes like that. These are your seven. I know I've done extras, haven't I? <laughs> You're thinking, what is she doing? don't worry about it there's a method behind my madness okay so that's this side done now I haven't done the final row of each square we're not going to do that until the very next tutorial what I want you to do is do one two three four five six seven or six in this case because we've already done the seventh one okay go ahead and do all these squares all right so there's your seven two three four five six seven Flip it. Whoops. Don't worry about that. I caught on some paperwork. <laughs> and do another seven squares. Now, these are the colours I used for this side. They are totally different to the colours I used for this side. Same colour. Same colours that we have. Different combination. Okay. If you want to have a quick look-see at the colours and then take a little screenshot and then you can use the same colour combination if you like. Um, that'll be one side, this will be the other. When you have finished doing all of your squares with the three rounds only, one, two, three, I'll get a nice close up, that's better, one, two, three, then we can get together and join them. Now I wanted to do the joining tutorial as a separate tutorial because it's a little bit awkward. It's not completely difficult, just a little bit awkward. All right, so go ahead and do your, all together, you have 14 squares seven on this side and seven on the other all right do your 14 squares meet me back here in a couple of days time and we will do the join as you go a different join as you go that you're used to seeing me do so don't start it without me just come back here meet me here and get ready for part two thanks for watching guys don't forget to like subscribe and share and also don't forget to join us on um, our lives on wednesday afternoon at 4 p.m melbourne australia time or saturday mornings at 10 a.m melbourne australia time thank you so much for watching guys and ciao for now good luck with your 14 squares